free. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm great. Doing really well. Thanks. Great. Great. Should I just, should I just say it? Should I just do it? Yeah, just do it. I love it when you call me Big Papa. We had to just get it out of the way. All right, we moving on. <laughs> now we got it. We got it out of the way. Um, and then, of course, we have the irascible Eric Peterson. Eric, no nickname Peterson. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm irascible once again today, huh? I just, I just, I don't know. Not it's a good really. word. It is. It's a, it's a fun word to say, even though it's completely the opposite of your personality. So. I, w- I should just say the, the soothing Eric. <laughs> no um, Bearland Aaron. Bearland. Hey, Mark. Glad to be here today. Glad to be And then, wow. It's a treat. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Hopefully, she's going to become a regular. The terrorist hunter herself. Mimi Terrorist Hunter Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Hi. I'm great. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Is the world safer today? We're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> We're working on it. All right. And then last but not least, you know him. You love him. Six Sigma. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmodo.com. And most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. Postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So for our roundtable pick this week, which is a short week because of Memorial Day, I want to just briefly mention Doug Kolb, um, one of our coaching clients that has served two tours, um, I believe, in Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, Doug, I was thinking about you yesterday. And actually, um, I walked by over Memorial Day. He actually goes to a cemetery and he seeks out the veterans in he says their name and he takes a few hours and does this so that they're remembered. And it kind of gives me chills just thinking about it. So um, happy Memorial Day uh, to all our, our veterans out there. Um, you know, it's the, the sacrifices, you know, in the, uh, the gratitude, like there just aren't enough words to sort of convey it. So um, that being said, getting that out of the way, Tay Litchfield, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about this idea of overthinking it. And I think it's something that we run across quite frequently. People overthink the offer amount or they overthink their marketing approach or they overthink where to target or how to do certain things in the business. And one thing I love that Scott always says in in flight school is, you know, a bad list beats no list, right? Some data that's not up to date is still better than no data. And I think that goes back to this idea that don't overthink it. And I think that's what Scott's getting at. Just, just mail, just market, just do whatever. Don't get into this spiral of getting too detailed and preventing yourself from making progress. Something we see too often. And I'm just curious how everybody handles that. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of, I'm going to pick on Mimi here. When she coaching, she has a very analytical background. And I remember saying to Scott, because we were talking about Mimi, like, is she ever going to get an offer out? Or is she going to analyze the market ad infinitum and, and be able to take action? And Scott, do you remember what you said? I don't remember exactly what I said, but uh, I remember looking at like my eyes like glazed over when Mimi showed me her spreadsheets of like all, all of the comps that she had done. And I was just like, wow, Mark, I don't know if I can do this, but what did I say, Mark? You said that you'll you'll get her focused. Oh. You'll get her. You'll get her. You'll get her to to do it. And and we were worried, Mimi. So, um, being the super geek that you are and super analytical, how did you sort of retrain your mindset to not overthink it? Well, do you guys remember what happened? I spent all that time on that long formula. I was so proud of it. And I ended up sending out some of my offer letters with zero as the offer price. Do you remember that story? 
I, I do. remember that. I remember you got a deal out of it too. My very first accepted offer was the guy that called me. He said, I'm confused. You're offering me zero dollars and zero cents for my property. And so I walked him through it. And so uh, I learned, right? I learned through experience, but I just got to get the letters out. And sometimes it doesn't even matter what the amount is because you'll learn about the market through the responses that you get or don't get. It's just that simple. So there I learned go. through experience not to overthink it and just make sure that I'm getting the mailing out. I mean, but do you find yourself overthinking it now at all, Mimi? Yes, yes, uh, completely. Particularly when I go into a new market, right? Um, I think we all get scared of making mistakes, right? And we all do. Um, but in the end, I still learn about the new market with whatever I end up sending out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eric Peterson, you're super analytical as well. And uh, I can imagine when you first started, uh, you know, being the type of person that, you know, measures four or five times, cuts once, right? Um, how did you handle not overthinking it? You know, um, I think at the time when I started, I was just kind of so enamored by the idea that, that I could buy property for pennies on the dollar that, that I just, I kind of stepped right in and just started sending out those offers. And, you know, I didn't really believe that, that I'd get something back. So it was just, um, you know, I, I didn't find myself overthinking at that point. I think it was later um, in the process where, you know, once you start getting into the technical details of, you know, how do I prepare a deed and, and do all these things. Um, but yeah, I mean, early on in the research and the, the sending out the offers, it was just really kind of sheer excitement at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Barely and Aaron, did you struggle with overthinking it in the beginning? Uh, I overthink things a lot. So yeah, probably not so much with the offers though. I know, um, you know, S Scott was my coach and, you know, he had us getting offers out and kind of stressed early on that, you know, getting them out was the important part. So um, that actually wasn't such a big deal. I think my, and something I still struggle with um, was more on the marketing into the sales end where, you know, we would find out what the, you know, stuff selling for in the market. And I would know in my head what it should sell for based on, you know, what we've researched and stuff, but, um, you know, not necessarily be in the mindset of just get it sold, you know, just make some money and move on and buy another one and, and, and re rinse and repeat, as you say. Um, so it honestly kind of wasn't until the uh, Vegas boot camp when uh, I sat down with Zeno and had a discussion and um, my mindset did change a little bit about overthinking the the sales and the pricing and that sort of thing, you know, that it's okay to make, you know, a hundred to 200 percent instead of three to 400 percent, you know, if it's a sale and you're making money and the numbers do make sense, you know, sell it, move on and, and get another one. Don't be attached. So that was one of my major overthinking spots and um, that is helped a lot since we've you know had that mindset change. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Todd, what about you? I mean, you're, you're, you're super analytical. Yeah. You, you know how you get out of that Mark is you, you recognize you have to get good at recognizing when you're stopping forward progress and just let it go. Right. Like you got to get really good to say, what am I doing? And like, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to give, an hour to look at these, these numbers. At the end of the hour, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna take action on it. And I think that the problem is, is that you, know, you, you sit there and you try to perfect things and you try to get them better and better and better and more dialed in. And then next thing you know, you become like laser focused. The blinders come on and that's all you're focusing on. And the reality is, is that it's not gonna change that much. Like what's there on your computer after even 15 minutes is probably gonna be the same as it is 15 hours. So especially when it comes to list offers and that stuff, the best thing to do is just to like take that list, get it, get it to where it needs to be, upload it and just go. But if you feel like you do need some time, give yourself some time, give yourself, you know, 
an hour if that's what you need. Like I think an hour is too much, but if if that's what will, will make you like feel better about it, then do it. Yeah, Tate, did you ever struggle with overthinking it in the beginning? I mean, not, yeah, probably, but I was just following the recipe, right? I was I was following in the footsteps of those that had, you know, achieved what I wanted and I realized that this business is all about just taking that action and one of the things that I do to prevent overthinking it is, is exactly what Scott says. If I'm going to research a new area or focus on writing an ad or do whatever, I have a time frame that I need to get it done with. I think. You know, if I'm going to write a new ad, I don't spend longer than one minute writing an ad. That's it. One minute. If I'm going to research a new county, I spend 30 minutes tops, right? So I don't, I don't allow myself to have too much time because I can't remember where it was, but it, I read somewhere that it said that if you give yourself, you know, three hours to do X tasks, you'll use the entire three hour time frame. But if you give yourself 30 minutes to do that same text, you're going to get it done in 30 minutes. So I just thought it was all about speed. And I think I still have that mentality a little bit towards the business. It's all about just getting it done as quickly as possible. And you learn from your mistakes along the way. If you over offer, well, at least you know what not to pay. Yeah, yeah, Eric. Well, I just wanted to add too, I think, you know, overthinking can go into so many different aspects of the business as well. I mean, from, um, you know, not only your list, but, you know, what are you going to name your company? Are you going to have a website? How's it going to look? You know, are you hiring VAs? How do you write that posting? How do I hire that first VA? There's so many different aspects that, you know, I mean, the reality is, if you just do it and get it out, you know, done is better than perfect. You can in probably just about every piece of our business, we can make corrections along the way. So if you post an ad for a VA and you made a mistake, you can go back and edit that ad. You don't have to spend two hours crafting the exact perfect ad, you know, and same with hiring a VA. I mean, again, like you could hire the wrong person and, just let them go if it's not working out, you know? So um, I see that in, in the coaching students a lot of times, just spending more time thinking about some of the simplest things, at least, you know, we might view them as the simplest things at this point in time when, you know, they just got to get it out there and, and move on and make corrections along the way. Mimi. I find well, that Mimi I think it am I still on yeah you're on I find that I think it because of fear right that I'm going to make a mistake but then when I stop and think about it all the mistakes I've made were easily overcomable in the end yeah absolutely and you know I'm like the flip side of that argument as well in the sense that I'm sort of ready fire aim and if somebody wanted to ask me like well what's the secret of your success I'd say it's that I just take action. You know, if Scott Todd's like, read this book. I don't think about it. I'm like, okay. And I get the book and I read it. And then I take notes and I take action on the things that I learn where it does get me into trouble sometimes um, where I, have, I didn't do enough sort of industry uh, research on geek pay, right? Like, I'm like, well, I can do this better. And, the, and just totally just start taking action on a SaaS product, but I'll probably be doing enough research. So sometimes it gets me into trouble, but what I found is that, like what Tate likes to say, there are, no, there are no land emergencies. All the mistakes that I've made along the way, no one died, right? Um, Mimi, I mean, maybe you're the exception on this call, where if you make a mistake, maybe someone would die, but you know, in that, might, but it's pretty rare, right? Not in your land business though. I mean, if, if Zeno, when he's firefighting, it, it could be life or death, but there's very few instances in business where it's life or death. And I do think like what Eric said, you can always adjust and, um, and pivot. Right. And I think that oftentimes when we're overthinking it, we need to have that in the back of our head. And there's this great study. I'm not, I'm going to totally butcher it, but essentially it said there's these gamblers, right. And they got five data points. Like these are professional gamblers. They get five data points on picking the horse. And then they were asked, okay, you know, based on those five data points, how confident are you? 
that you picked the right horse. And they said they were 17% confident, right? And then the race won and like, they were like 12% right based on these five data points. Then it went all the way up to like 150 data points. And the same gamblers said that they 40% confident based on those 150 data points. And again, they, they picked it 17%. So oftentimes more information is not going to help us. It's just going to make us get overconfident. And so sometimes when you're doing our county research, just price it, get her out, and then let the, let the market tell you um, if you're too high or too low based on the 3 to 5%. If your response is under 3%, you're too low. If it's over 5%, you're too high. Mimi, thoughts? Completely agree. Just the market. Bearland, Aaron? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eric? Yeah. Tate, you want to? Uh, no, I think that was it. I, just take action. Don't uh, don't wait too long. Just overanalyzing it. If if you're spending hours and hours and hours on one specific thing, I think it's time to take a break, walk away from it, give yourself 15 minutes, and get it done. Yeah, and and that reminds me, if you want the antidote to overthinking it, um, you just have to go the fight school with Scott Todd because he won't let you overthink it. You will get your list. You will price your list. You will get your offers out. And one of the great memes of Scott Todd is just move your feet, right? So if you want to learn more about flight school, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with Mike Zane or Scott Bossman. Um, June is filling up fast. Scott Todd? I was going to say that just tonight, just tonight, we are going to force some land investors to take action because tonight in flight school, uh, we will see to it that everyone in that group mails their offer letters out tonight because we start at 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight. And I've already told them we will not get off that call until everyone has mailed their offer letters tonight. So I did this, I've done this, I don't know, the last three or four sessions with flight school uh, that, that came in. There's a deadline, like tonight's the night we start mailing and tonight's it for, uh, for the latest class. And guess what, Mark? We will be on there. I'm hoping it's a short night, but I have gone on as long as almost like midnight before, like three hour call. Like we will mail. Absolutely. We're guaranteed success in terms of at least taking action. Now, beyond that, I can't guarantee anything, but we will succeed there tonight. I, I love it. I love it. So, as far as marketing is concerned, I want to just kind of go to the next topic. Um, there's this great new land platform out there. Probably you guys don't know about it called landmodo.com. And what's great about landmodo is while all the other lands are raising their prices and they're attracting the big brokers and the million dollar uh, land investor, landmodo is taking the opposite approach and really focused on our niche. I think they're the only site out there that's getting any traffic. There's other sites out there, but they're not getting traffic. The, if you go to alexa.com, you don't take my word for it. Just look up Landmodo and you can see they're actually getting traffic relative to other land sites. Um, what have been the improvements in Landmodo? You asking me, Mark? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, you broke up there. Hey, look, oh, so you know, we, we've continued to invest in the platform. It's not, uh, remember, the reason that we opened this up last year, the reason I took Landmoto and spun it and opened it up is because all of these land websites last year, the Lands, Landwatch, Land and Farm, Lands of America, last summer, they came to all of us, little land investors, and they basically said, hey, we don't care that you were on some grandfathered plan at $49 a month unlimited listings. We, we now have this super platform because we control the market. We're monopoly. And if you want to be on one of ours, you got to be on all of ours. It's all or none. And so like I was on an unlimited plan, $49 a month. I had been on that plan for almost two and a half years. And all of a sudden they told me my bill was $150 a month. And I'm like, $150 a month, you tripled my price. And the woman, the, the salesperson actually told me, well, we didn't triple your price. We just are making up for not increasing it along the way. And I'm like, 
that makes no sense. So instead of investing the $150 a month, I said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the other land investors. I'm going to open this platform up and we're going to take our money and we're going to invest in our own platform. And that's what land moto has become today. $50, I'm sorry, 50 listings on the lands, $660 a month. That's their latest price to me, $660 a month for 50 listings. So instead of paying $660 a month, I'd rather take the $660 a month and invest it into Landmoto, a platform that we can control and build the way that we want. So with that said, over the last year, we, we had to get some scale, right? So, you know, it's, it's like the chicken and the egg. How, what, what comes first? You can't necessarily get all the traffic in the world without necessarily listing. So we continue to kind of balance it. We, we balance the number of, of sellers on the platform. We've balanced the, the traffic so that there's a, a nice merge there. We've continued to make tweaks. A-B testing, like this goes back to the heart of like what we talked about for A-B testing. And we, we test everything. We change everything. We look at how the, the, the end user, the buyer is flowing through the website. We study what they do. We study what they click. We, we've got, you know, maps and everything, look heat maps, looking at everything. And we noticed like, man, they would go to search on something and they were thinking like they want a search engine that's like a Google powered search engine. And what they got was basically like a, a very simplistic search. You know, if they typed in this keyword, it would appear. So what we did was we invested in a search engine. That's right, it's an engine. Right on the front page of Landmoto, you can go there. And what this thing does is this thing actually has an algorithm behind it that will index each page on Landmoto. So think of like our own version of Google. We can go in there and we can look at what people are typing and the engine actually learns over time. Like, hey, they're searching for this. They're not finding it. So then we can change the algorithm of what it is that they're looking for to help them better match up to the properties that they want. So we have actually been testing this secretly for, I don't know, I'd say at least the last 45 days. And about two weeks ago, we actually made it live on Landmoto. So that, like, that's one of the major changes in there. But we look at everything like down to like the color, the color of the things and we're testing colors and we're testing we're testing everything. So like right before this call, I actually had a meeting and we, we looked at our response rate. You know, what I mean by that is this goes back to Kaizen. It goes back to all the stuff that we talk about, AB testing. I looked at our response rate in, and that means that for, for a user on the system to actually submit an email saying that they want information. Now, there's phone calls that we can't track. There's direct, like some people put their email address right in the ad. We can't necessarily track that. The stuff that we can, we can track in March, and this is our response rate, right? In March of all the users that were there, uh, a response rate of about 0.006, very weak, okay? Uh, April, it improved to 0.7. In May, so far this month, May is uh, 0.1. And if you actually take some of the tweaks that we've made in the last two weeks, we are at 2.0. So of wow. all the users, 2% of them are actually clicking through to properties and we're not done making our tweaks yet. So we're continuing to grow. We're trying to, to build on that, that buyer experience to match them up better to the properties that they want. And the search engine, that thing is just going to continue to grow. So we've made some changes to the pricing as well. One, we, we, uh, we took our best platform, which is um, the Platinum Group. That was like $80 a month. And if you pay annually, it's like half the price, okay? And we lowered, we did the same thing on the silver package. We changed that. We actually have a free listing platform too. That's gonna help in multiple ways. One, it helps us get more scale. It's the chicken and the egg syndrome. It gets us more scale. More properties on there, more buyers will come back because they're seeing more and more and more and more and more. And then we're using the search algorithm now to help better match those properties. Every day I'm looking at the, at the land sellers on Landmoto who are getting leads. And like we, my team and I were like high-fiving like, hey, Eric got a lead. Yes, Bearland got a lead, Frontier got a lead. We, we are happy because we're trying to make sure that everyone is getting leads. Wait a second, you're, I'm not happy Eric's getting leads over me. Well, listen, I, I, I'm not saying that anything's routed any particular way. Is it, I'm saying, is it the Colorado deal he stole from us? Listen, that, that does not matter, Mark. That does not matter. What matters 
is like today I was looking and I'm like, oh my gosh, he got it. We're seeing leads, like we're seeing leads across all properties. Like it's more and more, it's like the long tail search now is hit, happening. And it's like beautiful because what that's doing too is it's helping to raise organic traffic, paid traffic. It's all about that user experience and we're learning more and more and we're refining how to better match people to properties. Yeah, I mean, so what's interesting about all that to me is, and the biggest takeaways for me are, you know, it's a big marketing lesson for everybody listening to this. So take, what's your takeaway from what Scott's, the improvements Scott's made on Landmoto? Well, the improvements are as long as Scott's going to put his money into, you know, working and building out Land Moto, then uh, I'm just going to let him do a lot of the work for me. I'm going to join up, post more property and let him continue to market them for me because that's a no brainer. I'd love for Scott to sell more of my properties. In fact, I got leads this morning from him. So thank you, Scott. I appreciate you. You're such a nice guy, Tate. <laughs> yep, yeah, no, from, from a marketing perspective, though, I, I love the way it's doing the A-B testing. He's yeah. refined doing Kaizen. And everyone can, you know, even if not in the land business, you should be implementing that type of strategy into your marketing. Constantly testing, constantly iterating, knowing your numbers. And uh, Erickson, what do you think? Well, I was just going to say, you know, listening to the audience, right? I mean, that's, that's so important when you've got a product that you're you know, marketing to a group of people is to know what they want, what they need, how to solve their problems. So, um, you know, as land sellers, we, we try and solve individual um, buyers problems by providing the right piece of land that meets their need. But, you know, Scott's doing that on, on the website front as well. Awesome. Awesome. Bearland Aaron, what's your takeaway? Um, I've really enjoyed the changes. Um, it's, um, I, I actually see, you know, um, good response from the website. And I think um, that the search algorithm that Scott's talking about is going to improve that quite a bit. Um, you know, from a, the perspective of somebody listing on the site, um, Scott's also doing some other things um, that are helpful in a marketing sense. Um, some lessons, some teachings um, that can give you uh, some horsepower in writing better ads, um, in bringing more people to your ads specifically, you know, and that in combination with that powerful search um, is going to really um, expand the potential of the site and it's you know, viability as a, a pretty big marketing platform for our business. I'm really happy with the changes. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. My pleasure. Awesome. Mimi, how about you? My first sale in the land business back in 2016 was on one of those land sites. I sold three properties to one guy. I was so excited. I just received his $500 a month payment yesterday. Love, great note. So I thought I would get an a, a annual subscription, right? So I paid... $129 for 30 ads. And I just am finishing this month. I did not sell one more property this whole last year since they've changed. Uh, I was very disappointed. So I asked my VA when I found out that Scott had this new free service, I said, what the heck, why don't you post those up there? So I've done zero work because the VA did it for me and I got a call this past Friday. Guy wanted to go out to to, to my county and check out one of my properties. So now I need to, I was really excited, completely out of the blue. So now I have a lead from Landmoto and I need to go follow up with the guy see what he thought. So was, I was pretty excited. So now I want to upgrade my subscription. I love it. I love it. So I do want to remind um, the listeners, by the way, that we have a new Facebook alumni group. So if you've graduated from the coaching program, you went all the way through and you graduated, um, please join the alumni group. It's a great way to connect. It's a great way to network and just stay involved in the community at your advanced level. So it's sort of like taking that mastermind community and putting it on steroids. It's a very small elite group. And um, Mimi's on there. Eric's on there. Tate's on there. Bear Lands Aaron on, is on there. We're, we're constantly um, improving that. And um, it's a free group. There's no reason not to join. So uh, please do that. Also, today's podcast is sponsored by the Dirt Rich Book. 
Dirt Rich is out. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash Dirt Rich and get over $500 worth of bonuses and uh, get the book either in paperback or Kindle. Um, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. It's, it's an Amazon bestseller, which leads me to the next question. Uh, Eric Peterson, is it ethically wrong to start going to parties and saying I'm a, I'm a bestseller, bestselling author? No. No. I think you're good there. Mimi, is, is it wrong? Is it misleading if you're not a New York Times bestselling author? No, I don't think so. You're still a number one bestselling author. No, there, you're still there. Yeah. You did it. I did it. You did it. Tate, what do you think? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I'm going to parties now and telling everybody, hey, I'm in a book. So uh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tate, uh, are you, are you walking around with that book and signing the, like tapping the page? No, I just tell them, I just tell them to go buy it, you know, go buy it. If you want to see my little shout out in it, you know, yeah. but maybe I should buy it and give it out and sign mine under my name. Maybe yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. To, to, have you told your wife you're famous yet? No, 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 no. Uh, she, uh, no, she wouldn't want to hear it. She'd probably Honey, tell me to go. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> It should be like what in in the world of land. <laughs> now, when you when you sign that, do you sign Big Papa or do you sign Tate Litchfield? Uh, uh, you know, most of the time I write, you know, from the Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, with love. <laughs> you know, always XOXO. Delectable. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I thought uh, this was a great uh, roundtable this week. Um, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the listeners. Please support us. All you need to do is subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit, as well as the ebook, Dirt Rich. So please do that. Please support uh, the podcast. Uh, Mimi, thank you for, for coming on your, your first roundtable. I hope you, you come next week. I had a great time. Thank you so much for having me. That was great. Bearland Aaron, are we good? Yeah. yeah, we're great, Mark. Eric, we're good? We are good. Tate? Yep, let's do it. Scott? I think we're great, Mark. All right, so let's try to do this. Mimi's first go around. Oh my gosh, is this embarrassing? <laughs> One, two, three. Let's let freedom ring. Terrible. So bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Mimi, you're not you're not uh, flooded out, are you? Oh no, no, okay. no. I know some folks are, but Ellicott City has to deal with that. They need to. It's going to keep happening unless they do something about it. And it's usually the businesses and cars that are affected. It's not so much homes usually. All right, nice. So um, if the Vegas Knights win the Stanley Cup at Scottsdale Boot when? Camp, are you we meant, all going to have to wear when? like Vegas Knight when? jerseys? When? No, no, we're not doing that. No. I, you, you know, I, they're, giving out, they're giving out free tattoos at the, at the game. There's like all these uh, mobile tattoo guys out there. And if you want to get a tattoo, you just go get in line. They'll ink you up for free. The Capitals are doing pretty well too, aren't they? Washington Capital? Well, they lost last night. So I don't know if you want to call that good, but it was. <laughs> well, I think so. <laughs> Mimi, is, your, is, your, is your family a hockey family? No. Nope. Basketball and football. Basketball and football. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nice. Eric, I mean, what do you think about TateCon? Do we have to, like, get some kind of Vegas gear? No, I think I'll just, I'll bring my Cubs hat or something. That's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah. Go, Eric. Marilyn and Aaron went to Indy 500. Oh, I, wow. I don't understand. I don't understand it, by the way. Like, it's just, like, it just seems like, it just seems like a bunch of cars going in a circle really fast. Like after the first few laps, we're like, okay, I'm bored. Am I wrong? Yeah, I could, 
I could see how, you know, I guess it depends on if you're maybe a motorsports minded person, um, you kind of can view it differently. Um, it's when you watch it on TV, it's probably not much different than a NASCAR race or anything else. Um, but having seen it in person, even the limited view you have, like we were between turn three and four, you know, there were a couple of wrecks right in front of us. Um, it's kind of a neat experience. You watch it on the big jumbotron on the parts that you can't see. So you can see some of the action. And then when these things come, come by you literally like almost 200 miles an hour through a corner, it's just a spectacle that unless you've seen it, you, you just can't even describe it. You can't describe the feeling, the sound, the smell and everything. And I think that's what, what the draw is. And it's actually the largest, outdoor sporting venue yearly sporting venue in the world so it, it's it's quite a thing yeah i mean i know like for uh i think it's, i speak for scott and and uh and mimi and myself having teenagers like we don't ever want to hear about like how cool it is to go fast around a corner like <laughs> Hey, trust me. We remember uh, we had a rolled truck. Do you remember that picture a month ago or so? So I understand teenagers and corners. Yeah, yeah. Dad, it wouldn't didn't take two wheels like I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott Scott's son uh, skateboards, which by oh. the way is not a sport, but um, a sport. that's that's enough risk for like all of us. Yeah. You should see me on the skateboard, Matt. I got a skateboard. I'm out there. I'm skateboarding now. Are you serious? Yeah, I want to see that. I was out there Where's yesterday. Where's the video? Yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm doing any tricks. I'm just skating. Yeah, throw the GoPro. If there's no video, it didn't happen. Oh, there's lots of video. Oh, well, you can make video. Video is easy. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of risk, Scott Todd. Why, why? Yeah, I think you're an adrenaline junkie between the planes and, and the skateboarding now. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing it. I'm not, not like Ollie in like a stair set or anything. I'm just like taking the skateboard and going around on it, you know. I do think that uh, I'm the coolest dad around. I tell my kids all the time, like, I, I swear I'm the coolest dad around. So. <laughs> Speaking of the planes, have you done the math on the Lambert business versus the – Charter jet pilot, ten thousand dollar an hour salary. No, no. Curious. No, Scott can do his land business and fund his. Uh, he can become a Red Bull air racer. No, no, no. I was I'm not doing that. Race. Not <laughs> we we have a bunch of uh, clients that are uh, pilots that do that, and uh, they've got so economic dependency they they want that that passive income freedom freedom absolutely yeah mimi's husband's a pilot right mm -hmm. but he, he flies the big planes he flies big planes we flew standby to san fran this weekend because his golf trip had gotten canceled he was going to go to pebble beach with his dad and brothers and his dad started having heart problems so they had to cancel the trip he tried to give me the trip for mother's day told him no way <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hey you want to go to San Fran for Mother's Day like dude so um we went out just the family for the weekend flew standby it was lovely so, that's so yeah. cool yeah it was nice yeah the Schmidt family save is like either responsible like, I don't know if a, a family that a couple is responsible for more lives on a weekly basis than the Schmidt family when you guys have you guys ever really thought about that like no we have got on my program though we have gotten feedback that the information that we passed to the fbi has led to the death of multiple terrorists so it's good stuff it's that's cool it's good stuff Very it is cool. good yeah. it's, i feel i feel like it's like a netflix special waiting to happen yeah you know? so well, it kind of da david and mimi schmidt saving lives oh you're funny I don't flipping think land you know, you know flipping like, land the government really does react to these events like the Boston bombing. It may take them a while, but they do do things about it. It's an interesting story. I, I wish they do kind of a documentary on the, the aftermath of the Boston bombing and how it's changed intelligence. That kind of stuff. Interesting. That'd be cool.
Yeah. All right. Well, I got to go eat some uh, Indian food in honor of Scott. So thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. See you later. See you later, See you later guys.